session we would look at the elimination of unrealized gain or losses on specifically non-depreciable asset and to be more specific we're going to be dealing with land now why am i starting with this non-depreciable asset because eventually we're going to look at depreciable assets so it's very important that you understand how non-depreciable asset work because it's easier to understand how depreciable asset work. And this is basically a series of one of five lectures I will having. This topic is covered in advanced accounting, and obviously this topic is covered on the CPA exam, the FAR section. So make sure you understand this before you move into the depreciable asset, okay? Now, before we start, I would like to let you know that I would like to connect with my viewers. Uh, Please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I post lectures as well as other related accounting and CPA uh, posts. If you are a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page, accountinglectures.com. All my lectures are housed on my YouTube. Therefore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube. And I do have a Twitter account. I'm not very active, but I should be more active on Twitter. And obviously, you could reach me or find lectures on my website. So let's go ahead and get started with the first topic, which is intercompany sales of non-depreciable property, specifically non-depreciable property can, can be substituted by land. Okay. When there's an intercompany sale of non-depreciable property, work papers entries are necessary. Now, what, what are we discussing here? Okay. We have a parent company and we have a sub. Here's the general rule. Well, what's going to happen sometime the sub uh, the parent company will sell to the sub. Sometime will, will, the sub will sell to the parent company. And when we have a sale, we might have a gain slash loss. So we, we might have a gain or a loss because of the transaction between the parent and the sub. When we consolidate, when we prepare the consolidated financial statement, gains need to be eliminated, losses need to be eliminated because they're intercompany gains and intercompany losses. And we have to bring the asset back to its original basis. So this is the overall idea of what we're trying to do, eliminating any gain or losses. Okay, so, so work papers are necessary to include gains and losses on the sale and the consolidated net income only at the time the property is sold to an outside affiliate group. Remember, I have the P and I have the sub and any gain or losses between those two are eliminated. The only gain and losses is recorded the one that's to the out with the outsider. So we have to eliminate the gain and losses that's that's within the company and only sold to parties outside the affiliate. Okay, and that that amount should be the difference between the cost of the property to the affiliated group and the proceeds received. So at, at the end, what we do, we see what was the selling price, what was the proceeds minus the cost, and the cost will be the one to the affiliated group, to the original, basically the original cost. Also, we have to present non-depreciable property in consolidated balance sheet at its cost to the affiliated group. So always we have to go back and report the property at the cost to the affiliated group when we consolidate. And we'll see this in an example. The topic, I believe it's straightforward, but again, you want to make sure you understand this very well be before you move into depreciable property. So we're going to look at an upstream sale. And what's an upstream sale? Upstream sale is when the subsidiary sell to the parent. The parent is up there and it's an upstream, ups, upstream going upward. P company owns 90% of the outstanding stock of S company. On January 1st, 2011, S company sold the land to P company for 350,000 that has originally purchased the land on June 30th, 2007 for 200,000. Okay, so let's just think about it for a moment. Uh, the, the subsidiary sold the land for 350. The cost of this land for the subsidiary is 200,000. Therefore, the subsidiary is going to book a gain of 150,000. Hopefully we can all see this. That's the subsidiary. P company plans to construct the building on the land bought from S in which it will house its new production machinery. That's fine. It's not really relevant for us. The estimated useful life of the building for the new machinery is 15 years. We're not really dealing with the machinery. So that's also not relevant. So what entry do we make on the parent company? What entry do we make on the sub company? So what would the sub company record? Well, the sub company will have to record the cash. The, the sub company received cash. So they will debit cash 350,000. They will credit land. They remove the land for 200,000 and they will book a gain of 150,000. This is the sub. The parent company bought the land at 350 at 500,000 
I'm sorry, at 350. Therefore, they debit land 350. They will credit cash 350. So this is the transaction that took place on the parent company. And this is the transaction that took place on the subsidiary. Now you have to understand that the parent company owns, remember, we own 90% of S. What does that mean? It means out of this gain, out of this gain, we are going to receive, in a sense, 90%. Why? Because we own 90%. So we're going to be allocated 90% of this gain. So what is 150 times 90%? That's 135,000. Well, what do we have to do? Um, uh, we're using the equity method. So what's going to happen is this. Okay, what we have to do is we have to debit equity and income 135. Basically, we have to reduce our income by 135 and credit reduce our investment by 135. Why are we doing this? Because the gain on the sale of 150 the gain on the sale of 150 uh, will be reflected in our investment, but this is an intercompany gain, therefore we have to eliminate it. Okay, this is to reduce. Uh, this is the parent company to reduce to reduce its income from the subsidiary by its share of the intercompany gain. Now the parent company will will that will not do anything until the land so, sold to an outsider. Now, what is what do we have to do at the end of the year? At the end of the year, remember this gain here cannot be on the consolidated financial statement. So simply put, remember what we talked about earlier. We said the only gain, the gain to the outsider. If you remember this slide here, we only we count the gain to the outsider. Therefore, the $150,000 gain will need to remove this. And remember, the cost, the non -de the present the non-depreciable property at the cost of the affiliated group. The cost of the affiliated group is not 300,000. The cost of the affiliated group is 200,000. Therefore, we have to prepare a journal entry, okay, to remove the gain and reduce the land to its original cost. Because let me show you what happened from a T account perspective. From a T account perspective, the land is listed at 350 at the parent company. Okay, why? Because they bought it at 350. This is incorrect. The land is over, overvalued. Why? Because the land is supposed to be at only 200,000. Therefore, what we have to do is we have to debit gain on the land, on sale of land. This is to remove the gain. To remove the gain. And what's the gain? The gain is 150 right here. To remove this gain. Let me just uh, clear this. To remove this gain, we debit the gain. And we have to credit the land. Why? Because the land is listed again. Let me show you the T account. The land at P company is listed at 350, but to the affiliated group, it should be only 200,000. Simply put, this transaction here will act as if the sale never took place. Why? Well, we're back. The land is back to 200,000 and the gain is gone. Therefore, the gain is gone. So simply put, this gain is gone. The land is back to 200,000 because this is basically we reduce the land by 150. The land is 200,000 and credit the cash and debit the cash. They cancel each other out. So basically we're back to land of 200,000. That's basically what happened as if the transaction never took place, as if the transaction never took place. And this is how it's supposed to be. When you have an intercompany uh, gain or loss, it, it needs to be eliminated. So this entry is made to eliminate the gain reported by S company and to reduce the balance at at the parent company from 350 to the cost of the affiliate, which is 200,000. Now, what else do we have to do um, in an upstream sale? Prepare the, the work entries for the end of the year, December 31st, 2012. By the end of the year of the following year, remember this was, this is December 31st, 2011. A year later, what's going to happen? We basically have to do the same thing. However, the gain account is no longer with us. Remember, we debited gain here, okay, to remove the gain on the sub. But what happened by the end of 2011, this gain is closed. So the gain will be gone, okay? But, but remember, the gain, this gain went into the sub retained earning. So the gain went into the, into the sub retained earning, okay? And the land, the land was on the parent company. So let me go back to the land. The land was 350 at the parent company. So land 
at the parent company would still be on the parent company box 350. Therefore, what we have to do is this. The following year, we have to debit if we're using the cost or the partial equity method, we have to debit the, begin the beginning retained earning, 135. Why 135? Because this is the controlling interest and non-controlling interest, 15,000, a total of 150,000. Simply put, at the beginning of year two, this is year two, which is 2012, we have to reduce the, the beginning retained earning of 150. Why? Because the gain the gain that we eliminated year one, we eliminated for the consolidated, but it's still on the subs books and the retained earning of the sub. Therefore, we have to debit the beginning retained earning of 150 to eliminate that gain. And we have to credit the land of 150 because remember, on the individual books of the on the individual books of the parent company, the land at the parent company is uh, is uh, 350. Therefore, we have to we have to reduce it by 150, so it goes back to 200,000. So we have to do this entry every year until the asset is sold. Until the asset is sold. Let me eliminate, erase all ink. Okay. Now, if we're using the, the complete equity method, the complete equity method we update our investment rather than the uh, rather than the beginning beginning retained earning. Therefore, what we have to do is we have to debit the investment account. 150,000 because we deal with the investments and we have to reduce the land 150,000. So again, this is if we are using the equity method. This is if we are using the cost or the partial equity method, what we do in year two. And again, these entries would repeat themselves every year until the asset is actually until the asset is actually sold. So simply put, let's summarize. The P company continue to report the land on their statement at the intercompany selling price of 350. Remember, the individual, I know I keep, I, I'm doing, I did this several times. The individual company, the parent company would still show the land at 350. However, and the consolidated will have to show it at 200,000. And that's why every year we have to do this entry. We have to reduce the land and we have to remove the earnings from the earnings from the retained earnings. If the intercompany seller has been the parent, so if this was a downstream sale, so because this, I showed you this is an upstream sale. If this was a downstream sale, what is downstream sale? If we switch the subsidy, the sale going from the parent to the subsidiary, then the entire 150 would be to the controlling interest. We would not have any non-controlling interest resulting in a debit of 150 to the beginning retained earning of the company. Simply put, if this was a downstream sale, so this is downstream, it means the parent company sold it, then non-controlling would be gone and this will amount will be 150 because we will not have a non-controlling interest because we are selling to the subsidiary. Therefore, the gain will need to be eliminated from our books. Okay, there is no NCI, simply put. Okay, now let's take a look at another example to compute the net gain when we sell to an outsider. So a P company owns parent company owns 90% of the outstanding common stock of S company. On January 1st, S company sold land to P company for 600,000. So this is basically an upstream sale. Okay, that's fine. The comp S company has an or originally purchased the land for 400,000. So the S company, the subsidiary, they have a gain of 200,000. 400, 600 minus 400 equal to 200,000. Remember this gain will be eliminated at the end of the year. Okay. On January 1st, 2012, P company, the parent company now sold the land purchased from S company to a company out to an outside affiliate of for 700,000. Now P company, the cost, they sold it for 700,000. Their cost is 600,000. Therefore P company would, would report again to third party from third party. This is a gain from third party. We don't eliminate this gain. This gain will stand because it's a gain to, to, to an outside party. Now, if I ask you, what should be the total gain reported in, in 2012? Well, if you really think about it, the gain reported is should be 300,000. We already reported 100,000. Okay, we still have to report the other 200,000. Why? Because the total gain for the group, for the, for the basically, for both the sub and the sub, for the sub and the parent. So we have, first we went from the, we, we have a gain from the, the sub sold, the sub sold to the 
parent and we had a gain of 200,000. Then the parent sold to a third party and we have a gain of 100,000. Therefore, the total gain for both is 300,000. Okay, so let's compute this. Compute, calculate the gain on the sale of the land that's recognized on the books of P. On the books of P for that year, they would recognize 100,000. Calculate the gain that should be recognized in the consolidated financial statement. In the consolidated financial statement, the gain should be 300,000. Simply put, we should show total gain of 300,000. When when all, all said and done, the total gain will be 300,000, of which 100 is from, 100 is here, 100 coming from here. If 100 coming from here, how much left to be recognized? 200,000. Therefore, what we need to do, we need to book an additional entry at December 31st, 2012 to credit gain on the sale of 200,000 and debit beginning retained earning if we're using the cost or the partial equity method and a non-controlling interest, 200,000. Now you might be saying, hold on a second, why am I doing this? What's the purpose of these entries? Remember, in 2011, in 2011, in the sub, what the sub did in 2011, the sub debited cash, the sub debited cash, they sold it for how much? They sold it for 600,000. So remember, in 2011, the sub debited cash, 600,000, credited the land, 400,000, and the sub recorded a gain of 200,000, recorded a gain of 200,000. This is year one for the sub. Now, this gain was eliminated year one and the consolidated, but it stayed on the books of the sub. Therefore, this 200,000 went into retained earnings. So what we have to do when we actually sold, when we actually sell the, when we actually sold the asset, we have to take it out of the sub retained earning and, and, and transfer the gain into the affiliate, which is, that's why we credit gain on the sale of 200,000. Okay. Now also what we did, so this is, so this is a gain of 200,000. So this is basically will be part of the consolidated financial statement. And we have another gain here of 100,000. So when the, when we sold it, when we sold it to the third party, the parent company debited cash 700,000 credited land 600,000 and credited gain 100,000. Therefore, we have a gain of 100,000 here and the gain of $200,000 here. Therefore, as I told you, the total gain for the affiliated group is 300,000 that should be reported in the consolidated financial statement. Now, if we're using the complete equity method, the only difference is rather than using the begin beginning retained earning, everything goes to the investment account. So the investment account, because we're using the equity method. So it's basically the same thing, except, you know, the difference is this. Let me highlight the difference between the two methods, because you might be using the cost method. You might be using the, the, uh, you might be using the uh, the cost versus the uh, equity method. So I want to make sure I highlight the difference between the two. Here's the highlighter. So it's either you'll debit this account or you'll debit this account, depending what entry, what method you are using. Now, again, if there was a, if this was uh, a uh, downstream downstream sales, the whole thing will go to beginning retained earning because we will not we will not have NCI. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments. By all means, email me or see me. Uh, well, if, if I happen to be teaching the class, see me in class. If you need additional lectures, please go to my website. And if you happen to go there, um, please consider uh, making a donation. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.